135, action. Welcome to today's Azure Masterclass. Who's interrupting my first Azure Masterclass? No! <sighs> we really need to talk about storage. Hello everyone, today we're going to unpack the fascinating world of Azure Storage Solutions. By the end of the session, you'll have a solid understanding of the different storage types available and how to make the most out of them. I'm Ryan, one of the senior engineers on the consultant team here at Sunextra. Here's what we'll cover today. Overview of Azure Storage Solutions, deep dive into each storage type, demo of creating a blob storage account. During the demo, we'll also go into the detail between standard and premium storage, and finally uploading and accessing a file in a blob storage and how to edit it. All right, let's dig deeper into each of the Azure Storage types and give you some real world examples of how they're used. Blob storage. Primary use case, it's ideal for storing unstructured data like images, videos, logs, backups, and so on. It's highly scalable and secure. Most often going to be used by sysadmins, web developers, but there's always exceptions to the rule. An example for when blob storage will be used is a website. You're going to be hosting static images up there and videos. That's quite a common thing. And backups, etc. Blob is very, very commonly used across the whole of cloud internet. Azure files. Primary use case, cloud-based file share that you can mount and access like a regular file share. It's easy migration from on-premise supports SMB, NFS, etc. Um, who uses it most? We're going to be looking again, sysadmins are going to be using Azure files. An example of where you could use this would be to replace your Windows file server. So you can pick up your Windows file server and just put it in Azure files. Nice and easy. Next up, we have Azure Queue Storage. Primary use case, it's great for storing and retrieving messages. Uh, the benefits, it's highly available, can process and retrieve messages in any order. Uh, it's most often going to be used by DBAs, backend developers. A great example of when you would use Queue, if it helps visualize it, is an e-commerce company could use Azure Queue to handle a large amount of transactions. Maybe they put a sale on, they're getting 10,000 transactions in, queues them up and it goes through them. Stable, steady, secure. That's the best time you want to use Azure Queue. Next up, we have Azure Table Storage. Primary use case, it's designed for storing structured NoSQL data. It's cost effective, it scales really easily. Again, most often it's going to be used by DBAs, software architects, maybe data scientists. An example for when you would use this is when you don't need all of the relationship that a traditional data database would give you. Most databases, they have keywords, they have items and all the IDs and they all link together in complex ways. Azure Table is such a simplified version of that. A great example for Azure Table storage is a mobile video game. You have a leaderboard, you just need names, numbers, but you're going to be accessing it constantly because you have so many people potentially accessing this. So you need to be hitting it, removing and adding things constantly. So you need something that's super scalable, super online and accessible, very easy to use. And that is when you would use Azure Table Storage versus a traditional database like Oracle or SQL. What's your favorite video game with a scoreboard? Favorite video game with a scoreboard. Oh, I like League of Legends. That's, but that's a different sort of scoreboard, you know, that's um, that's one that shows me at the bottom all the time. Um, and then uh, I'd like Tetris, because I think um, I, I do pretty well in Tetris. I do, I do pretty good, that's that's my, that's my secret weapon. If I was to be challenged, that's the game that I would pull out and people wouldn't expect that, so yeah. Not, not COD. Mission failed, Tetris. we'll get them next time. <laughs> time for a hands-on demo. I'll walk you through creating a blob storage account in Azure. First things first, let's get logged into our portal. So we're going to go on storage account. Everything I've mentioned today is a storage account. And then there's lots of options inside there that allow us to choose the exact storage that we need. So subscription, we want our default subscription. The resource group that we're going to put this in, we're going to put this inside public because I'm creating a publicly accessible blob. I'm going to drop one file in there and we're going to access it later in the video. Storage account name. Now, naming conventions, we've already gone through this before, but storage account name, anything with a name, you need to know exactly what you're doing up front. Now, the Azure Cloud Adoption Framework naming abbreviations, which we will link below, is very important. You should use that to try and standardize as much as you can. So what I know is storage accounts start ST, nice and simple. Um, but storage accounts, you can see here, we need the name to be between three and 24 characters, and this is unique to the entire planet. So this isn't just for your organization, the entire planet has to be unique. So good luck trying to just get storage account. Let's let's make something a bit more specific. So ST for storage account. You can see we can't use any special characters. Next, we're going to do Stark for our Stark Industries. We're going to do storage 
demo and then we'll just drop a one in there there we go so storage account stack storage demo or one region uk south that's that's the region that we want to use now quick side note let's just talk about oh, standard versus premium storage standard is hard drive based it's hdd so it's spinning disc it's it's a piece of iron spinning with magnets going over it now premium is ssd based if you want much more enhanced performance at a higher cost premium is the way to go but you are going to pay for it as with anything azure more performance is always available if you're willing to go out of pocket for it okay. yeah nvme is the next step up above ssd where ssd is 10 times faster than hard drive in general nvme is 10 times faster than ssd pretty much on azure you can only access that on virtual machines but that's probably the only place that you want to access it because you need high speed when you're doing nvme which you might need for a vm that is under extreme load all the time but yeah as far as a storage account we've got hard drive or ssd is, is your two options let's carry on with the demo we're only going to use standard for this uh what redundancy option do we want so i'll go over the redundancy options now we've got local redundant storage which means within one data center of uk south so zone one two or three within one of those data centers we have rack redundancy so if a whole data center went offline local redundant storage means you're offline geo redundant storage that will allow your data to come up in a different region which could affect your latency so you might want to choose that if you're thinking about backups uh, zone redundant storage zone redundant storage means that within uk south there's three zones one two and three three different data centers zone redundant storage will allow us to bring our data up in another data center within that region which means that your latency won't be affected it shouldn't be affected because it's, it's they're going to be very close almost on the same campus and then gzrs obviously the most premium version where grs allows us to power up in a different region and zone allows us to power up in a different data center within a region gzrs covers both bases if you want to pay for it. So let's carry on. So we're going to use locally redundant storage for this. So we're going for the cheapest option. It's all we need. We're just uploading a basic text file. Let's move to the advanced section. So in here, we're going to leave most of these settings the same. We don't need to change any of this. Uh, one thing that I would like to highlight just on Blob is hot and cool. What it says right here, this is what it means. Hot is data you're going to access frequently uh, for day-to-day -day usage scenarios. Imagine you're using Blob as a file share, which we're technically doing with the file I'm about to upload, and um, cool up for data and backups scenarios. So we're just, we're just gonna leave it on hot because we're just we're just gonna go over the default settings on this. That's fine. Network. So we're gonna enable public access from all networks, but this isn't gonna be accessible from our core. It's not gonna be accessible from our business. So it's it's part of our subscription, but it's gonna live on the public section. And um, so we still manage it, but. Public access from all networks is fine here, if, especially if you're doing files and you're putting a fi you're moving a file server up. You are gonna you're gonna want to use private where possible. Disable public access, private with uh, private endpoints. That's another video. So let's leave this default here. Enable public access. Microsoft Network in absolutely fine. Data protection. We're fine with this. We've got soft delete by default. Seven days if you deleted something, you can go and restore it. Absolutely fine. All this is all this is good here. Encryption. Again, this is fine. Let's leave this. Yep, absolutely. Microsoft manage my keys. Bobs and files, and we don't need any tags, review, and let's create this. Seven seconds later. Very limited cloud lag when you're dealing with storage accounts compared to some items. If anyone's dealt with image galleries, you'll know you'll know the pain I'm talking about. And just while that's finishing, I just want to say Azure storage, blobs, file tables, queues, these were these were things that scared me before I started playing with Azure. Um just because it was just it was the unknown. We'd not used these terms before in traditional computing. Um and it's just something I'd not come across. So getting stuck in it really took, it really took, pulled the curtain back. It really pulled the curtain back, getting stuck in with it. Just if you can get online, get a free subscription if you can. Sometimes you can get a subscription with maybe like a hundred dollars a month for free potentially in there and just make one. If you're, if you're hesitant, you're not sure on the differences, just get on there, make yourself a storage account and just click through all the options. You'll just see as you click one option, you might get more options and that's where you can make your tables and queues, etc. Deployment is now complete. So let's go to our resource. So, storage browser. Okay. So here we go. So you can see we've got our storage account created now. Nice and simple. We've got general purpose storage, local redundant storage, which is what we chose before. We did standard storage and we've got LRS. And now let's go and let's go and actually upload a file and access it from the internet. We're going to go in here, blob containers, go in blob. By default, it's got logs turned on, which is why we've got a logs folder. We're going to add a container. We're going to call it Stark Dash Demo. Create the Stark Demo. Now let's upload a file. Let's browse. Oh, here's one we made earlier. Hello world. Upload this. And without even opening the file locally, I can just show you what the contents are. So now that's uploaded. Let's go inside the actual file. 
Okay, so we've got our file uploaded now. Here's the Hello World file, and it's a text file. So we just we can just view and edit it right there. Hello World by the first person that did a Hello World. Regards, and um, we can edit this. So let's just put in anything in the middle, save, done. Brilliant. So we can edit it from the Azure portal, from the Azure Blade, but can, how do we actually see this file from the internet? So let's go inside here. We've got a URL, copy the URL. We can't access it from here. Public access is not allowed. So even though we've got public on for networking, public authorization isn't there. You can't access it without being authorized. How do we get authorized? One very easy way to make ourselves authorized is generate a SAS token, generate SAS. It's as simple as this. We've got it here. You could just click generate. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change this to one hour. There we go. So we've got from now for one hour, generate SAS token and URL. We've got a SAS token. You might use that if you're calling into an API, but I'm not, I'm using a web browser. Let's just copy the blob SAS URL. You know what? And we'll access it from a private browser. Put this in here. There we go. We can now access and see this file. Okay, we've looked at how to view a file. That, that's great. Give me one way to edit it. That might be more useful for most admins out there. What we're going to do, we're going to go back up a level. So we're going to go in our blob container now. So here's stack demo. And we're going to do the same SAS, but on here. So we're going to generate SAS here. Um, we actually need to give ourselves some permissions. Maybe you just want to read and see what's in the folders, but I, I want power. Get, let's, I just give me all the power. Wow. Is the one because I'm only giving it to myself again. Let's just let's just chop it down. Let's give ourselves one hour here. Turn a SAS token again here. Copy this to clipboard. Now we're going to use the Azure Storage Explorer that we've got in here. First things first, let's attach to a resource. What are we attaching to? Blob container. It's not a trick question. SAS URL here, exactly as we've just generated the SAS token down here. Next, we're going to paste in here. We're going to paste in what we just copied out of here. You might get some error messages here. Maybe you forgot to give yourself list permission, etc. You'll, but you'll see you'll see them here. Just work through them. It's quite straightforward forward as you've seen copy paste and now next and connect there we go we can already see our hello world file okay now let's open this file open we're going to edit it effectively through the storage explorer so here's what we had before we got one two three four five six seven eight nine let's get that saved here we go you see the pop-up in the back here file change detected we've changed the file of course we have what do you want to do i want to upload it let's just overwrite the hello world that we've already got in our blob and then let's apply those changes there we go. You can see it's transferring. So it's only text file. It's only going to take a second. Transfer done. Now, theoretically, if we refresh this page, it should have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at the end. There you go. So there's one way that you can also access your data like it was just a file share. You can use as your file explorer there. Oh, I hope, I hope I've spoken enough about the the deep dive on the storage types. When it was written down, I was like, all right, that's enough to talk about. But when I'm saying it out loud, it just felt like it went so fast. This video is sponsored by Exam Topics. Not. Absolutely. So AZ104, implement and manage storage in Azure. Four hours and 25 minutes recommended learning time. Um, on Azure storage. So it is a very key part for one of like the most solid foundations of Azure qualifications that you could even think to get, AZ104. One of the best places to start. 900 if you've not got a huge amount of experience in IT. 104 if you do have experience. If you've got a couple of years, start with 104. Um, great certificate. And yeah, as you can see, implement and manage storage. You're going to be spending a good amount of time on that. What we've just done today and a little bit further of a deep dive and some more of the theory behind it as well. And that's a wrap for today's Azure Masterclass. I hope you're not feeling more contained in your understanding of Azure storage solutions. Don't worry if it feels like a lot to queue up in your mind. We'll help sort that out. Uh, stay tuned for our next class where we'll dig more into Azure mysteries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.